Pentecost. All right, we in day 29 or 40 days of prayer. A mission and service was a theme given to me last night. I'm going to continue with that today. There's a lot God wants to tell you today, so just bear with me as I bring you the word of God uh, on our theme for this weekend, service and mission. So let's get down to God's business. Uh, his message, not mine, his message for you today, carpentry service with a mission. Carpentry service with a mission. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Our oh, Father and our oh God, I, I pray that uh, our coming together today will not be in vain. Uh, uh, Daddy, uh, uh, comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Uh, Father, may these words not return void, but they, may they accomplish that which you intended. For we ask in the sweet but strong and mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the saints of God say, Amen and Amen. The book is Mark, the chapter is 6, and the verse is 3. The book is Mark, the chapter is 6, and the verse is 3. I want to read verse 3 of our main text again, uh, but this time I want to read it from the, the Message Bible when I did my research. The Message Bible brought it out a bit more succinct for me now. Verse number 3 from the Message Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to read it now. Quote, but in the next breath, they were cutting him down. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. We've known him since he was a kid. We know his brothers, James, Justice, Jude, and Simon, and his sisters. Who does he think he is? He's just a carpenter. He's just a carpenter. Shortly after Jesus left this earth, uh, there was a heretical teaching called Gnosticism. The Gnostics came on the scene and, and taught that Jesus could not have come in the flesh. For Gnosticism espouses that all matter, the environment, was incurably inherently evil and that Jesus could not have come in the flesh. He would have contaminated, he would have been contaminated by the evil in the atmosphere if he came in the flesh. The first century churches were affected by this heresy called Gnosticism. Because even in the first century world, they were struggling to understand who Jesus really is. And then there was the other teaching called Docetism. The Docetists suggested that there was a mirage or some sort of optical illusion that resembled Jesus. It was not a literal body. It was simply that of a ghost, that Jesus never came in the flesh. So he could not have shed any blood because the body was simply a mirage. That's docetism. Uh, that affected the early church. Uh, just when you thought things couldn't get worse, and back in the early church, in the first century, uh, just when you thought things couldn't get worse, then came the belief of kenotism or kenosis. Uh, they suggested that when Christ came to earth, he humbled himself of some of his divine privileges. He humbled himself of some of his divine attributes. Then he emptied himself uh, to be relevant to the rest of humanity. You see, this tension, these questions of who Jesus really is, belong and started a long time ago. And then, then came Arius. Arius came on the scene and espoused that Jesus had no divine essence. Uh, he taught that Jesus had this type of affinity with divine, that he called it homoousios. Homo meaning same and ousios meaning substance. Uh, Arius taught uh, that Jesus Christ had a similar substance or a, a like substance like God, but he was not like God. Then it got even worse. Apollinaris came along, and Apollinaris suggested that when Jesus came to earth, he was divine. But his mind was too divine, uh, so uh, he could not have been contaminated. So he could not have had uh, any level of humanity. I I'm telling you all of this to show you that, that from since way back then, there was always this struggle and this tension about who Jesus really is. Did he come in the flesh? Is he all human? Is he all divine? Is he an optical illusion? Who really is Jesus? At uh, this time, I want all of you to know that the reason why you've come here today is because God has called together what I want to call the Council of Huntington. 
We are here today because not only did the first century world struggle to really know who Jesus is, but those of us who proclaim God's unsearchable riches, those of us who come to this pulpit week after week after week, and we proclaim and preach about a Christ who our finite mind really can't comprehend who he really is. No wonder the world is so messed up. No wonder research shows that 33 million people would not come to church because we preach about a Christ who we have never really met. Huntington, I want to suggest to you today that part of the tensions we're dealing with is that as we try to proclaim Christ over the past several years, we have preached Christ as being this Christ who is our King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, he is our king, and he is our Lord. We should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We are citizens of that kingdom. We pray thy kingdom come. Jesus Christ is our king, and we preach about the kingdom. We are joint heirs with Christ. Uh, we are royal priesthood, uh, a holy nation, uh, a peculiar people. Uh, we expose so much about the kingdom of God, and rightly so, because we are part of the kingdom. We are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. But, uh, brothers and sisters, the challenge today I want to suggest is that we have preached and offered a one-dimensional approach of Jesus Christ. We have not really preached Jesus Christ in its totality. Perhaps the world cannot recognize and identify who Jesus really is and who we are. Because if we really don't know who Jesus is, then of course we don't know who we are. And so part of our challenge today is that we have been so caught up with being citizens of the kingdom and proclaiming Christ as king that we have become little kings and little queens. Uh, I'm going somewhere. May I also suggest to you today that if you only present Christ as a king, and if you only see yourself as a citizen of that kingdom, then we will never branch out into ministry. We will never branch out into service. We will never get into executing our mission because we are representing a partial view of who Jesus is. Jesus is not just a king, but he was also a carpenter. And so many of us are, are walking our Christian journey, walking our own Christian journey, trying to duplicate his royalty rather than emulate his carpentry. I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. The problem we are facing is that some church leaders want to serve for a year or two and then get frustrated that we don't have lots of members coming into the church and we're not increasing the size of the church because we only want to be kings and queens and not carpenters. And some of us, we don't mind being kings and queens, but we don't want to serve as carpenters. And we want the benefits of royalty without the commitment to carpentry. Because Jesus was not just a king. He was also a carpenter. And the challenge for us today is that the spirit that Mark leaves for us in the text here is the spirit that is prevalent today in the 21st century. In the text, in the text. Jesus is in his hometown. He's with his mother and his brothers and his sisters. Look at verses 1 and 2. He comes into his hometown. And his disciples come along with him. And on the Sabbath day, he begins teaching. And I love how the Message Bible, and I'm preparing the sermon, puts it. I love how the Message Bible puts it. Verse 2. On the Sabbath day, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. He made a real hit impressing everyone we have no idea he was this good they said how, how did he get so wise all of a sudden with such ability and verse 3 still in the message bible now but in the next breath they were cutting him down he's just a carpenter mary's boy uh, we know his brothers, we, we know his relatives, we've known him since he was a kid. Uh, he played in the streets as a child. Who does he think he is? And the New King James Version says at the end of verse 3 into verse 5, they were offended. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. 
and he could do no mighty work there. Jesus wasn't able to do much work there. Why? Because they only had a one-dimensional perspective. They had problems. They had problems. They had problems with carpentry. So I say today, so what if he's just a carpenter? Because if you're only a king and a queen, and your perspective is only that of a king and a queen, it can have eternal adverse repercussions for you. These folks had problems with seeing Jesus as a carpenter. And so the Lord sent this sinful messenger here today to balance the equation. Yes, continue to lift him up as king. Continue to lift him up as our Lord and Savior. We are citizens of that kingdom as heirs and joint heirs because we are people who he will bestow his blessings upon. He will. He will. But if that's the only perspective you have, because notice, these folks in Nazareth had problems accepting Jesus in totality. And when you do not have the holistic perspective of who Jesus really is, three things can happen to you in your ministry of service. Three things can happen to you in your walk of life. I'm going to give you those three things, then I'm going to take my seat. One, one, if you only see him as a king and don't accept him in totality, the first thing that can happen in your ministry of service is this. There will be a lack of progress. There will be a lack of progress. Back to verse 3 from the Message Bible. They tripped over what little they knew about him and fell. And they never got any further. They never got any further. They ran into a ministerial brick wall because they got problems with carpentry. Uh, have you run into a brick wall in your ministry? And you're wondering where the next dimension You're wondering why you're not getting any growth with what you're doing. Well, if you're only being a king and a queen and not understanding that it also takes carpentry. I did my research on the internet. Why is it that in some parts of the world that some start out in ministry and only have 50 members and the pastor needs security? Why is it that leaders of our church can't fellowship with the brethren after service? Too anointed to shake hands and interact and hug our members. In Hebrews 4.15, the Bible says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus Christ, our high priest, can be touched with the feelings and infirmities. He can sympathize with us. It's a shame when Jesus can be touched, but we can't. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. We keep running into brick walls in our Christian service. We can't get to that next level in our ministry. Is it because you're too good to paint? You're too good to clean. That's not your job. You're too good, too good to allow the people to see you serve. You expect people to do what you yourself would not do. And you'll never get any further because you've got problems with carpentry. There's a lack of progress. Because they had issues with carpentry, they never got any further. You want to improve in your Christian walk and your ministry and your service, and you never accept Jesus in totality, you will never get any further. Because Jesus, Jesus was not just a king, he was also a carpenter. If you really exegete the life of Jesus from a biblical perspective, when you really look very closely at the life of Jesus, very closely with a microscope, very little of Jesus' life reflected kingdom. All right, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. All right. You don't believe me. Look at his mother. Not the daughter of Claudius or Caligula or Marcus Aurelius, but a 16-year-old ghetto fabulous girl from the slums of Palestine. That's not indicative of a king. Look at his earthly father, not Tiberius or someone who was a part of the illustrious Sanhedrin or the Greek or Roman aristocracy, but an ordinary fellow by the name of Joseph. That's not indicative of a king. 
Look at where he was born. Not in some plush neonatal center in a hospital palace, but outside in the stable with stinking animals because there was no room for him in the inn. That's not indicative of a king. Look at where he was reared. Not in Rome where Virgil sang or Cicero played, but in a place called Nazareth. Nazareth was so inconsequential and a place of such bad reputation, Deidre. I heard someone say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's not indicative of a king. Look at when he got ready to, to feed his church at an evangelistic series. 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, in a desert place. He didn't have an American Express black card to take out to pay for a banquet, but rather he had to borrow a little boy's two-piece fish snack to break it and bless it and feed his church. That's not indicative of a king. Look at where he lived. Look at where he lived. Not in suburbia, in some three-story, six-bedroom house with 50-inch flat-screen TVs. But he said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. That's not indicative of a king. Look at how he made his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. Not in a Bentley or a Rolls Royce with 24-inch chrome wheels. But he had to borrow a man's donkey and his coat from the village of Bethpage. That's not indicative of a king. Look at when he died. Look at when he died. Not buried in a mausoleum with Herod Agrippa. But he had to borrow another man's tomb to be buried in. That's not indicative of a king. So if so much of Jesus' life indicates that he was not a baller or a shot caller, what makes us think we're too good to spend some time in carpentry? Because you can tell when you have problem with carpentry. When your house is bigger than the church building, you have a problem with carpentry. When you drive a 2016 Benz, but the church can't afford a van, you have a problem with carpentry. And maybe that's why the church can't get any further because you want to be a king and not a servant carpenter. If you want to go further in service, if, if you want to have success in mission, then let people see you are making the biggest sacrifice. You are, you're the biggest, you're the hardest worker. And stop trying to be a king. If you've got a problem with carpentry, one, there's going to be a lack of progress. But not only will there be a lack of progress, if you have problems with carpentry. The second thing is, there will be limited power. There will be limited power. Look at the text, verse 5. Verse 5. He could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Jesus, Chris, is in his hometown. And while he was at home, not a foreign, home, he could only save a few folks because they had problems with carpentry. Uh, could that be the problem? Why we're not chasing demons out of the churches? Could that be the problem why nobody's getting healed anymore? Uh, could that be why nobody's being set free and delivered anymore? Because we're so being concerned about being up front and being on display. You've got to be careful if your service is about getting a spot on a reality show. God has called us not to show off our humanity. He has called us to show off his divinity. Service ain't pretty. Ministry ain't beautiful. Our mission is going to be rough and tough. Topsy-turvy at times. You're going to have to get your hands and your fingernails dirty. If not, we limit the power of God. Holy Spirit, got to help me because I'm going to say it. Tells me to say it. It's not, help me, Holy Spirit. It's not that God does not want to do more in our ministry. But the challenge is his kingdom cannot come because our kingdom has not gone. Yes. 
We have become Nebuchadnezzar against Jehoiakim and his son Jehoiachin. We have become Cyrus against Nebuchadnezzar. We have become Darius the first. And so what we end up doing just like them is fighting over land and territory. Hey, 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 that's my department. Stay out of my department. You are not in Sabbath school. This It's not about you, not even your department. It's not about you and God's church's department. It's about him. It's about him. You're only a servant. And if you're too good to serve, you're not qualified to be called. Because a servant is a slave. Total obedience to the master. A servant is full of humility. He has a humble opinion of him or herself. Just ask Paul. Just ask Paul if you want to understand what I'm talking about. Sister T, I went to Paul. And Paul told me in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10, Sister T. Paul told me, Lee, I'm the least of the apostles. Uh, talking about humility now. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. We have limited or no power because we're too try busy trying to show off ourselves up front. We have limited or no power because we're too busy trying to be in charge and hating on others when they get the opportunity. Let your God-given gift make room for you rather than you trying to make room for your gift. Listen, listen, listen to me, saints of God. Listen, listen to the sinful preacher. If you would stay small enough God would make you big enough soon enough. Amen. Arrogance, I'm going to make you play in the book now. Arrogance, narcissism, and elitism do not belong among those who are supposed to be leading God's people. The Holy Spirit cannot and will not fall upon that. If you're arrogant, don't bother praying for the Holy Spirit. You can't fall on that. You get three letters and a period in front of your name. And uh, now you want to walk around like your King Kong, Elder Mark. When actually, they're actually curious George. I have two letters for my name, Elder Mark. I have two, I have two, two letters and a period. M-R period. Margo, you have three. M-R-S period. It's not about me. It's not about what I can get. It's about him being high and lifted up. When you have a problem with carpentry, there'll be a lack of progress, number two, we will limit his power. Jesus, the omnipotent one, could only save a few folks. In his own backyard, a few folks. When we have problems with carpentry, there will be a lack of progress. When we have problems with carpentry, there will be limited power. Third and finally, when we have problems with carpentry, we will lose his presence. Verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6. He could do no mighty work there, Auntie G, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of the unbelief, then he went around the village's teaching. Message Bible says this. Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there. He laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. That's all. Tracy, the Message Bible says here, he could not get over their stubbornness. Then he tells me, Pastor Forbes, he left and began going around other villages, teaching. I always thought that the two saddest words in the Bible, Jordan, were Jesus wept. No more understanding, the two saddest words are, he left. Uh, we get I'm going to break that down, break that down. He left because he had problems with carpentry. Now, if the Holy Spirit left some of our churches, 80% of us would still act as usual. Because for some people in their ministry, uh, the Holy Spirit left a long time ago, but you don't even realize it. He left. Alicia, he left. What happened when he left? What happened when he left? He went to the desert. He went to Galilee, he went to Ty, he went on to Sidon, he went to Bethsaida, he went to Caesarea, he went to Philippi, he went to Mount Hermon, went to Capernaum, he went to Judea, then he went to Jericho, Jerusalem, and then to Bethany, then he went to Bethpage, and he went to the Mount of Olives, then he went to Gethsemane, then he went to Calvary. When he left, follow me now, 
When he left that village, he went to the desert, to Galilee, to Tai, to Sidon, Bethsaida, Caesarea, Philippi, Mount Hermon, Capernaum, Judea, Jericho, Jerusalem, Bethany, Bethpage, Mount of Olives, Gethsemane, Calvary. When Jesus left that village, Javion, he never returned. We want to do ministry because we got the gift. You can have homiletical attractiveness and hermeneutical accuracy. But if there ain't no power there, if there's no Holy Spirit there, some churches, let me wrap this up now, some churches have assembled an impressive list of ecclesiastical accoutrements. Let me call it. Can I tell you the role? Let me call the role. 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 Website. Present. Check. Praise team. Present. Check. Choir. Huh. Present. We have more than one, two. Check, check. Uh, musicians. Oh, yes. We have one, two, three. Check. Present. Big shot speaker. Oh, yes. Present. Check. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And while we're still saying Holy Spirit and it's not present, then we add another praise team and we add another speaker. Right. Huntington, I don't know about you, but I can't do service and carry out Jesus' mission without his presence. I'm talking about the same spirit that broke through the silos of the not yet universe and declared, let there be light. I gotta have that presence. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you look good on the outside, but do you have any power on the inside? What are your motives for service? What happens if, if the conference assigns you a church of only 50 members? Will you, will you power on God? What happens if, if the nominating committee decides uh, uh, to, to, to offer you uh, to serve as assistant deacon or an usher instead of head elder? Or will you come to the realization that if I only got five members to pastor, that's five more than I deserve to pastor? And I'm going to be committed and serve and do the best I can with what God has given me. Yeah. Trying to be kings and it's not the season for kingdoms. It may be the season for carpentry. If you can't be faithful as a carpenter, stop expecting God to make you a king or a queen. So caught up in ourselves. I'm the pastor. Uh, I'm the elder. I'm the president of the conference. Uh -huh. Uh, I, 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 I'm Dr. Lee. Uh, uh, sit down. It's not about your title. It's about your testimony. End this now. I think the Lord has said enough to you today. I don't want to give you too much. Let's end it here. Let's end it here. Some people. I'm done. I'm done. Some people. Some people. Helped build Noah's Ark. But some of those who helped build Noah's Ark, they were lost. Holy Spirit help me. Some people will help build the church, but some of them who help build it will be lost. One of these days, the last evangelistic series will be conducted in this Huntington church. One of these days, the last sermon will be preached in this Huntington church. One of these days, the last altar call is going to be made in this Huntington Church, Valerie. Imagine with me that long journey. That long journey took from heaven and come down here. He did it for me and for you. We didn't see him go up, but we sure can see him come back down. For those of us, we are playing hopscotch in the river on the bank of church, playing with God and playing with our soul.
Before I take my seat, I have to make sure that no one can say they did everything when I went to God's church. When they did not call anyone to come to Jesus. So, it's now the time. It's now the time for me to talk to one person here. Now is the time when I don't, I don't speak to everybody anymore. I speak to one person now. I don't, I don't care what you think you have done. What, what, how bad you think it is. How wicked you think you are. I don't care what they say about you. Jesus told me to tell you personally that he loves you. And that he came here and died for you. And he told me to tell you that he died for you even though he knew that you're going to be a backbiter. You're going to kill and steal and murder. He knew all of that. And he still said, Father, Daddy, I'm going to die for them. What are you now going to do for him? Every head is bored, every eye is closed. Praise team. Every head is bored, every eye is closed. Withholding nothing. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Withholding nothing. He's our daddy. He did everything for you. And all he asks of you is to remain faithful and serve him. Is that too much he has asked of you? Picture him on the cross. Brow messed up with sweat. Side pierced. Crying. I can hear him say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken feeling all alone? I hear him withholding nothing. I hear him withholding nothing. I hear him. And he's talking to one person at Huntington today. One person. One person who's withholding nothing. One person. That's the person I'm talking to. As the praise team gets ready to sing, that one person is going to withhold nothing today. That one person. Heads above, eyes are closed because I, I want this to be an individual commitment. Jordan withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Praise team, work with me. The praise team is going to sing. While I, I, I ask you in faith to get up in faith and say to Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to serve you. I'm not going to serve Huntington Church. I'm not going to serve Pastor Benoit. I'm going to serve you. That person is standing and you're going to come. Pastor Folks, come with me. Because we're going to have prayer right now. It's not for everybody. Pastor Folks, get ready to pray. Get a microphone ready. Get ready to pray. It's not for everybody. This prayer is going to be those who are saying, Jesus, I want to serve you with everything I have. I'm giving you all or don't give me anything. Who's surrendering all? You're coming. If you need help, I'll come get you. You're coming right up front. You're coming right up front. It's okay. You can bring the babies. It doesn't matter. Come. Bring my girl, child. Come. 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 You're coming. You're coming. You're coming. It's all or nothing. Come on. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. There's somebody else here. Get ready for battle. There's somebody else here. Somebody, you're holding back. I don't know why you're holding back. You saw what God did for you. You saw what He did for you this week. You needed that job, and He gave it to you. Why are you still in your seat? There's somebody else. There's somebody else. You need that money. You know the bills came in one way or the other. You gotta trust them. You are coming. You are coming. I see you struggling. Yes, I see you struggling. God says to move. I give myself away. Where are you? Where are you? There's somebody else. There's somebody else. I give myself away. There's somebody else. 
You're so saying, you I want to serve you. There's somebody else. I know there's somebody else. I give myself away. Congregation, you're standing. Congregation, is everybody standing now. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Sing, please. I give myself away. God bless you, God bless you. There's more, keep singing, there's more. I surrender all to you. Sing it low for me, sing it low for me. There's somebody here. Everything you may not want to surrender all, but you want to surrender your grandkids. You, you want to stand in the gap for, for, for your husband or your wife. You, you, you want to surrender your son or your daughter. You two are coming to the front. You are coming to the front. You're a little young baby, you want to surrender them to Jesus. You're coming to the front. You're holding nothing back. You're coming. Is there one more? Is there one more? It's not for you now. It's for your family. It's for your son. It's for your daughter. For your godkid. God bless you. You are coming now. You're coming. Not for you anymore. Stand in the gap. Press closer. Let him come. Press closer. Let him come. Come closer. Let him come. Come, stand. Come, come. 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 Your child is going off to university? You better come stand in the gap now. Come now. Come. 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 There's room. She's sick. I know she's sick. You've been praying for healing so long. But you give it. You, you give it all to Jesus. You're coming. Come, come. I want you closer. Come, come. Come. I want you to come. Is there more? Come. I give myself Come. away. Come. Is there so more? You can you sing, Christy? Sing. I give myself away. More coming, keep singing. There's more coming. God bless you, brother. God bless you. There's more coming. Keep singing. God bless you. I give myself away. God bless so you. you. God bless you. I see that hand in the back. Everything I give to you. I give you everything I have. Everything I have. Withholding nothing. Jesus, I put it on the table to you today. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. God sees those hands. God bless you. God sees those hands. Withholding nothing. Everything we give to him, everything. With holding nothing. Yes. Yes. With holding nothing. With holding nothing. Pastor Forbes, we're going to pray especially for those who came forward. Heads about, eyes are closed. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While the others thou art calling, do not pass me by. This morning, Father, you have come by here and you have called your children. You have reminded them that you love them. You have reminded them that if they were the only soul in the earth that accept you, you would come. And so this morning, I thank you for your daughters, for your sons who have come forward. They have come forward because they see that there is value in being aligned yeah. with you. Yeah. 
they have seen that you have done marvelous things in other lives and certainly you can do it for them too and so I call I we call upon your name now Lord because there is not a name under the sun whereby man can be saved there is not a name and so father thank you for coming to visit with us and thank you for your man servant who have rem reminded us that you came as a servant as a carpenter Lord we are thankful that many have responded because certainly they want you to be their special significant other in their lives they want you to be their savior they will know that Lord if you turn away from them they have no chance of eternal life but because they have accepted you this morning Lord they will have eternal life they can indeed have joy and joy abundantly mm -hmm. so I thank you for those who have thank come you. forward thank you. and Lord those who are still contemplating those who are in the valley of decision you're still calling them too yes. and Lord you're asking them to accept you yes. for you are the, the prize of great value yes. you are the pearl that we all need yes. and so father thank you for the response of this congregation thank you for those who have said yes to Jesus, yes, Jesus. and no to yes. Satan thank you for those who say yes because they are going to be in the book of life yes and so father I want to pray a special blessing that you will take them mm -hmm. you will fill them with your Holy Spirit Please, Lord. you will satisfy their material needs yes. you will satisfy their spiritual needs you will satisfy their social needs but Lord we especially pray that they will want to walk with you yes. they will want you to be always with them and so I thank you for promising to be with each one of them mm -hmm. to never turning your back on them, never, don't leave them may they understand this and may they hold on to you. So may this be the very beginning of a special day for them. Yes. A special journey for them. Mm -hmm. And may they know that when they walk with you, there is no failure. There, is, will, there will not be any sadness, mm -hmm. but there will be joy forevermore. Yes. Yes. For we know that the heaven, that all angels are in heaven, are now rejoicing yes. because of their decision to choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, thank you so much. May we leave this place now, knowing that you have every one of our concerns in your heart yes and so for those who have come forward standing in the gap for their grandchildren their children mm. and relatives yes. and friends may you honor their coming forward Please, knowing that lord Please. they are coming forward will not be in vain but Please. they Please. will too see the blessings that you have in store for them we thank you for what you will do today and what you will do when they leave this place today thank you Jesus. thank you, thank you. And we ask now that you'll accept our prayers in the name of Jesus, our loving Savior. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen.